Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy Lockdown Chat, the show where we spend our time locked down here in Shanghai, China, talking about topics related to the Chinese car market. Our topic for today's video is one that we are very excited about, and I think that our fans will be very excited about as well. We are going to be having a little debate, myself and my two guests, as to what we believe the best Chinese mini electric vehicle is right now, currently available on the market. Speaking of my two guests, they are one, Mr. Mark Andrews, veteran automotive journalist here in China. Welcome, Mark. Good to be back. And of course, Mr. Elliot Richards, who will recognize from the Fully Charged show, as well as his own YouTube channel, China Driver. Welcome, Elliot. Hello again. Hello. So let's start by introducing the vehicles that we have chosen as our representatives. I will go first. I have chosen, of course, the one, the only, the big daddy, the OG, the Mini EV, the Wuling Mini EV. Uh, Mark, what is your choice? Probably call you also big daddy. It's pretty damn small. <laughs> um, it's the Cherry QQ ice cream. Ah, yes, aka the other Mini EV. Um, so yeah, the one of them. It is. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're that's growing. True. There's, there, there is. It's, it's, there's something about this segment. This is a hugely uh, growing segment. And one, by the way, obviously, we are not going to be able to cover every single car because there's a new one, it seems like, every week in this segment. And they're all pretty interesting. But we've chosen ones that we think could be um, the best choices. And I'll get to the categories that we're going to be judging them on in a moment. But first, let me get to Elliot. What choice have you brought? What vehicle? Well, I've gone for the only real car in the list i think today which is the latin mango or also known as the the mango on the on the badge uh, but it's meant to be known as the mango that's right that's right i think mark pointed out to us uh before that this is actually not in chinese the chinese name is manguo which is mango it's a um a transliteration of the term word mango but in china in english it's actually m-e-n-g-o the mango um which is very much a less flattering name but uh, I, for the sake of this competition, I'm going to continually refer to your vehicle as the Mengo um, with very good pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking of this competition, we have chosen a few categories upon which we're going to be judging these vehicles, starting with exterior styling, then moving on to interior styling, followed by performance, including like power, talking about things like horsepower, kilowatts and torque. Uh, as well as range, and then finally, value. Now, these first two categories, we'll go straight to our exterior styling. The exterior and interior styling categories are going to be voted on. So these uh, that means that we're going to be, these are subjective. And the one rule is you can't vote for your own vehicle. Now, I am representing the Mini EV, and I'm going to start, of course, with that vehicle. So... As I said before, the Mini EV, kind of the OG, this is the one that really proved that this category was highly valuable to Chinese automakers and could be something that um, had commercial appeal. We drove the car. We've all three have driven the Mini EV. Um, and we'll maybe, we'll save our driving impressions for later when it comes to the performance category. But um, I do think that it was very groundbreaking. The one picture on screen right now is a Macaron, which is the most recent or macaroon is a macaroon i keep my i keep almost pronouncing um, it like the french president yeah i think it should be macaroon like the biscuit Ma yeah macaroon mm. um, not the president not the president the yeah. uh, the, the willing mini -V presidential transport there <laughs> it could be it could be i would listen i i'd be pretty cool if the chinese government officials started getting drawing around in mini evs that, that would be kind of cool. oh i'd like that i'd be pretty cool i'd like it more with a home Chi badge on um, the front but <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. The point is that I think the Mini EV is absolutely adorable. I love the way it looks like a little bit. I've always, in my my review of it from over a year ago, I described it as being like a pug, like the dog. I just love how it's just kind of like a scrunched up little face. It's super, super cute. Um, now, um, Mark, tell us a little bit about your choice. The, what is that? No. Wait, that Mini EV has a Chang'an badge on it. What happened? <laughs> Oh, it does it have a Chang'an oh, badge on it? I'm saying that yours <laughs> looks like the Mini EV. <laughs> oh, mine? It's a cherry, not even a Chang'an. Oh, sorry, never mind. <laughs> so I wonder I where they got the inspiration from. It's just, you know, it's very hard to pin that down. It's hard, it's hard. Okay, I, to I... be honest, I also thought 
um, I also thought that the um, Cherry QQ ice cream was a bit of a copy when I first saw it. But when I actually looked over it, and when I look at it more closely, it is not such an outright copy as, for example, the Gemmel Lingbox Uni. I'm sorry? That I only what? just discovered what that one today, <laughs> precisely. Lingbox I've never Uni. heard of it. I saw some pictures on um, Twitter, actually, of it. That's a pretty big dead ringer, as is the BAW S3. So the Cherry QQ ice cream obviously is very much in the same vein as the um, Mini EV. However, it has a slightly more distinctive look. It looks like basically someone has gone down the side of it with an ice cream scoop and oh, scooped out a chunk. So it's got more pronounced wheel arches and on some versions, it's got a more pronounced grill. Plus, those lights in the front, they've got sort of a droopy puppy dog eye look to them. Very fetching, I know. I and one just thing, described my car as looking like a puppy dog, so go on. And one thing, also the names. The three trim levels, pudding, cone, and sundae. There you go. Oh, wow. Wow. Imagine. Oh, and one other thing. <laughs> Some of the cars have got spo some of the show cars got spoilers at the back, very eighty style spoilers, very tight, uh, very. Uh, imagine, imagine going into a showroom or speaking to your friends and saying, "Oh, what do you what do you drive? Oh, I drive a, a cone, a what? An ice cream cone, a what? <laughs> I just and those lights are they just like like it's droopy eyes of disappointment because it's not a a wheeling mini EV. So oh. Oh. sorry. <laughs> Oh, You're man. Level, why don't you? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Mark. I'm sorry, not Mark. Mark, that was your choice. Was the QQ ice cream, Elliot? Tell us a little bit about your choice. Yeah, so I've gone with the Latin mango, which I said before was I think the the first real kind of car. You know, we've got five proper doors. Um, that's kind of really it going for the car. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of styling, it doesn't really have much in the way of styling. It's kind of generic box of wheels. Um, and I, you know, I do think the wheeling really excels here. But the wheeling, you know, is it that practical? I don't know. We'll come on to that later. But yeah, but I think, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not going to win this round, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, well, <laughs> a man, I respect a man who accepts What a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, really, you should be working for uh, Letin or, or Yema or whatever, whoever. Or oh, Wuling, more like. For maybe yeah. you, should, you, should, you already you do, do. Do you work for Wuling? I, I, people are going to say that I do mm. after this. Actually, they'll watch my original review of the car and they won't think that. Um, <laughs> now, another thing, I think the thing that puts the nail in the coffin for these two other cars when it comes to their competition with the Wuling Mini EV is the fact that the Wuling has so many awesome versions, including the Game Boy, which is a recent release, which is the one the uh, viewers are seeing on screen now, which has kind of a fun, youthful aesthetic, you know, uh, video games. Hey, that's what the kids are into. Just stop you I'm right told. there. Stop <laughs> you right there. The Mini EV has a um, not the Mini EV, the QQ ice cream you can't has, even a game you can't has a game stuff. station version. Ah, yeah, that's not. I mean, come yeah. on, with a screen as well. For What's game station? Games on? I have no what? idea. <laughs> It's like a copy of a, and, a Game Boy and a PlayStation. What is it? And there is a space version. And the which like one is it? Rocket? The space version has a really chunky body kit on it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. There Although I don't know if either of those are actually available on the market, but no are, show cars. Well, because if we're going to do show cars, there's a there's a six wheeler mini EV. So just. Yeah. That's it. Hand, just put my cards on the table there. And then, of course, one of the other thing this uh, the Mini EV has, the other ones do not, is an upcoming, a convertible version. So pictured here at the Shanghai Auto Show, we all saw it. We all loved it. I personally am excited to, to drive it slowly because, obviously, this is not a safe vehicle to begin with. Taking out yeah. a major part of its structural rigidity is not going to result in uh, probably a very great dynamic experience in terms of driving. If you really want to kill yourself, yeah. Yes, it, it might be suicidal to drive it, but God, you're going to look good. You're going to look good when you die. Um, not after you crash, you won't look good. But prior to... Well, I suppose ejection seats. It, it, would, it, it could use them because I, I, 
I think that what's going to happen is it's basically going to be like one of those like 1980s muscle cars or actually anything prior to the 2000s muscle cars where you would go over like a railroad track or something and you could if you looked at the other side of the dashboard it would like flex and go up like 10 centimeters or whatever um, probably it's going to be like that but I don't care I just truly don't care I can't wait cannot wait to get behind the wheel of that but that's the uh, that's gonna do it. That's our first category, exterior styling. We do need to vote. So remember, you cannot vote for your own vehicle. I am going to personally, as a as a flattering, uh, listen, imitation is the highest form of flattery, as they say. And so I must give my vote to the QQ ice cream only because it looks like the mini EV, which is the best looking of all three. Um, Mark, what is your choice? I am going to go for the letter mango because. It's the most like a real car. You are, you are a good choice backstabber. First, you steal. First, you steal the man, the, <laughs> the <laughs> styling of the Wuling, and then you just stab it right in the back by going for its <laughs> opponent. Um, all right, Elliot, what, what is your choice? I mean, I've, I've only got two, and they look the same. So, <laughs> for me, it's going to be the Wuling Mini EV. They just the details are just a little bit better than the ice cream. Uh, so that's one point for the wheeling. I think Elliot was won over by the convertible, if you ask me. But either way, uh, I agree with Elliot, and yet I cannot vote for my own vehicle. So I guess that exterior styling, guys, it's a wash. I'm starting to think that maybe my point system may have some flaws in it. But hey, yeah. uh, it's all for fun. Um, speaking of which, let's move on to our next category, which is interior styling. Now, <laughs> this is the one where I'm not going to lie, I don't think... The Wuling Mini EV is going to excel, but I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to try and sell you guys on this thing. Um, we've all been inside of a Wuling Mini EV. Uh, I personally, in my review, I can't lie, I compared the interior plastic qualities to somewhere between a economy car and a public bathroom. Um, and I and I do stand by that. It's the hardest, most plastic interior I've ever been inside of. But I think that it does. It is very practical. It is very ergonomic in terms of where the buttons are placed. Um, both the QQ ice cream and the Mini EV, as you guys will see in the slideshow, the pedals are basically in the middle of the car <laughs> because it's so narrow that the wheel hub kind of like pushes into the passenger compartment like a like much like the Volkswagen, the T2, the Combi that we reviewed on the channel. But... Again, putting all that aside, I think that especially in the Game Boy version that is seen on screen right here by our viewers, uh, I think it looks great. I love the splashes of color. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, Mini EV all the way. What about you, Mark? Tell us about the QQ ice cream. Okay, I, I think, <clears throat> first of all, why the, Mini, uh, why the QQ ice cream is better is that the screen is more in the screen in front of the drive is far more integrated to the dashboard whereas with the mini ev it just sort of sticks out yeah. and so it's got much better integration also there are little mounts there at the top for another screen so i don't know if that's sold as standard with any but certainly on certain show cards they've actually had a screen mounted in the middle. And so that seems to be an optional extra or something. Um, it's just better designed in general. It looks like more thoughts being put into it. I think part of the reason is that Cherry actually has a far greater history with making cars than Wu Ling has. Um, Cherry have been making cars what since around about the early two thousands. Mm. Um, well, so whereas has, so has Wu Ling, but I think well, Wu Ling ha hasn't actually been making cars. They've been making mian vouchers, right? Which are sort of commercial vehicles. Commercial so fans. in fact, yeah, in fact, the Wu Ling Mini EV is their first car. They've obviously had the Belgian range, and it's quite strange how they actually introduced the Mini EV as a Wuling rather than as a Belgian. True. Mm. Uh, I don't really understand why they did that, because up until that point, all their vehicles were commercial vehicles. Well, they, they committed um, so much with, with the... They could not have used that design as a Belgian because Belgian committed so hard possibly. to that like robot mini car look, which is awesome. And I encourage you to check out both myself. Elliot, you've driven. Did you drive? Do you, you have a video of the E300 or anything? Yeah, we've done the we've done one on the E three hundred. Yeah. Okay, great. So check out. Um, be sure to check out both Elliot and my videos on that because I think they're they're super interesting cars. But Mark, mm. that. But I do think you're right. 
Yeah, I do think you're right. It's interesting that they chose to introduce it as a as a oh, and a ruling. also it has Bluetooth phone connection, more, more, and it has something called iCar Ecology IoT Internet of Things. So I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it might be able to. <laughs> You might be able to ping ping your microwave and get your dinner on on the way home or something. I don't know. Right. Um, this is I assuming, think that's by the way, combination that you left your food in the microwave all day long, waiting for the moment. <laughs> yeah, precisely. If you're some yep. sort of absolute efficiency. Great psychopath. hygiene. Great hygiene there. So. <laughs> Melted ravioli. I, you got your room temperature <laughs> ravioli yeah. just sitting in the I, microwave. I, I have long. no. I don't really know what it does, but it has something which is in combination with higher so that's okay. why i say the microwave so i mean it's obviously got something to do with household appliances doesn't it mm -hmm. oh dear so. i think i think your point about the the quality is is really very apparent even in the the photos everything's very shiny plastics in the in the wooling mini ev and like you said they only, they've only got experience with commercial vehicles whereas cherry joint venture partner with uh jlr jaguar land rover yeah and so probably they... coros Yes. And so they probably <laughs> the least said about that, the better. Probably. Probably. <laughs> so I hope they've learned a bit and they they've applied it to this car, which is what it looks like. So yeah. I can't deny it, you guys. I'm looking at the photos and I do think that the QQ ice cream looks higher quality than the mini EV. Um but uh but that's not our only competitors, of course. The third competitor and in my in my opinion, the other guys are looking at the photos. I I sent them ahead of time. I've chosen what I think is the best looking interior for the Legend Window. Ethan, why did why have you done this to me? You've chosen like I've driven one with a perfectly fine black interior, but this one is the most obnoxious interior that you could have found. It is all blue. It's like a Smurf has climbed in there and exploded. And <laughs> These are sunglasses. These guys Dreadful. can actually see me when we're recording, so they can't see that I'm actually crying, laughing. Um, <laughs> my, I it's... would say, my my girlfriend, I was showing her some of these photos in, in 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 anticipation of this video, and she said she described the interior of the Mengo. Uh, this particular interior interior is a crime. <laughs> She's a designer. It is a crime. She's a designer who called it a crime. <laughs> so I think that's official. But I I still I will not back down from the fact that I think it's it's awesome that such an interior exists, but. Elliot, please tell us a little bit more about what you know about the the Latin windows. <laughs> okay, if you can look past the blue, this is actually quite a impressive in interior for the price. You know, it's not the best materials; it's never going to be. But it's got you know proper seats. Pedals are in the right position. It's got two screens. You guys have only got one screen. One You're very limited. <clears throat> No, well, no, that but like count. don't putting a putting a bike rack on a car doesn't count as having half a bike. So <laughs> no. no, I don't think you have one and a half screens. You but, can only fit half a bike in one of these mini cars anyway. That's true. <laughs> and so and you've got like a lot more features. So you've got electrical like windows, the windows are all electrical and you know, it's just a a, a more hey, both composed... the EV and the QQ ice cream have electric windows. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. It's just the most kind of composed, well thought out interior. It's not it's not gonna win any design prizes. It's not as funky as the, the mini EV. The the one thing I would say though, if you look at this photo and you look at that massive kind of cup underneath the, the middle screen, then you look underneath that where the cigarette lighter is and you look at where the, the, the twisty button for the drive modes are, nothing's aligned. None of that is aligned, none of that's centered. <laughs> So I don't know what's happened there. Uh, that's, some sort of design mistake or production mistake, but that's that, maddening. That, that's, do you see that? That's looking I, I feel that the pa I feel the passenger seat might even be a little bit narrower than the driver's seat. What do you reckon? It does look it does look that way, doesn't it? I I I think I think this is looking into the face of evil. I think the <laughs> was intending on driving people insane because now I cannot stop seeing that. Though I do appreciate the shape of the screen being mirrored in the shape of the cubby. Class, classic little move there. But um, one yeah. thing I'll say though oh. that that what um, Elliot mentioned about the pedals—that's a very good point. Mm. Because quite honestly, the Willing Mini EV it's really pretty uncomfortable with those pedals being offset the way they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I haven't driven the QQ ice cream, Mark. I know that. Um, I, I haven't sorry. either. The QQ ice cream is the one that none of us have driven yet. But we, yeah, some at least some of us have driven. We've all driven the Mini EV. Some of us have driven the the Mango. 
Um, just and, Elliot. Just Elliot's driven the Mango, so we'll go, we'll, yeah. which is why he's representing it. Um, but I will say, I just want to second strongly what Mark was saying, which is that that the ergonomics of the Mini EV, and I have to assume the QQ ice cream. The QQ ice cream must be the same. Must be the same. The pedals are also that it's, light. It's like, it's like an 80s Lamborghini or something, or 70s Lamborghini. You're just like, sh- feet are shunted off to the right side. It's truly uncomfortable. And as someone who already has low back problems, I imagine that spending, adding to that the, the very, very rudimentary suspension of those vehicles, I imagine that I would be in a, a, quite a bit of misery after maybe, you know, an hour, not even at th- 45 minutes behind the wheel of that thing. Um, Actually, it won't last that long, will it? Probably not. <laughs> so don't worry. Yeah. Um, Certainly the shorter range version. That's yeah. True. That's true. We'd be out of juice. Um, so that brings us back around, though. We need to have a vote. So uh, you can't vote, again, for these categories of exterior and interior style. You can't vote for your own car. I am going to vote personally for the, oh, let me see. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of so I love that the let me go back I love that the this color exists and it is available in the mango yeah I gotta go with the mango <laughs> I gotta go with the mango I I I I I like I do want to give credit to the QQ ice cream because I feel like as Mark said it's it's just a better thought out version of the uh, of the mini EV it has the same charm but it just looks better integrated and it actually styled as opposed to just kind of put together like Legos um and so it, it i gotta give credit but i have said in every video i've ever done i think i'm a huge fan of colorful interiors even if they're absolute travesties of design like this one the fact that you can go out and buy a fun little uh electric car and show up and look like you ex- you threw up ice cream on the inside of it is a-okay with me so the mango gets my vote but uh mark what do you think should really be mango ice cream rather than mint mm. or something, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess it should have been orange. Yeah, um, I'm afraid I'm also have to going to have to go for the mango as well because I can't vote for my own. Can I say? Yeah. Good choices. All right, all right, Elliot. Just for just for the mango is going to win this round. But uh, why don't you uh, tell me what else? What would your vote be? Mine's going to be the ice cream, not the wooling. I just think the the quality of the materials, the thought behind what they've done is just just a little bit better than the wooling so ice cream all right all right well i kind of saw that one coming but maybe i can bring get back some points in the next category which is performance (laughs) now (laughs) performance is a relative term when we talk about these vehicles these are not intended to be performance vehicles by any mean by any means they are intended to be cheap transportation just to kind of get you from a to b but we are going to do this this is very objective it's all about power and torque so i'm going to start by telling you guys some of the more important numbers related to the wooling mini ev so there are currently two different powertrain options available for the mini ev when when i tested it there was only the 20 kilowatt hour version i swear the first version was actually actually had less power than that yeah i thought it did as well 15 kilowatts i'd have to go back and watch 12 maybe yeah the current one now has either, so it's 20 to 30 kilowatts and 85 to 110 newton meters of torque so again top spec 30 kilowatts 110 newton meters of torque that's the equivalent of 40 horsepower and 82 pound feet Ooh, spicy now there is no official 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time for this vehicle and i don't think there's one for the qq ice cream either because the actual listed top speed is 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour but i was able to find one Bless them. Bless their bless their hearts. Uh, one media who took the time, and it was a lot of time, to test the 0 to 100 time of the Mini EV multiple times. And their best time under what seemed like pretty good conditions was 31.34 seconds. 31 seconds? No way. That's Boy, like a... can't be that bad. I mean, what, what old card... Milk like, that's float. like a car from the 30s or something, isn't it? Yes. Milk float. Milk float is probably faster <laughs> than that. Is that an English thing? I don't even know what that is. Yeah. They were oh, yeah. Trick. Okay. Although I think they were lead acid batteries. It's like a milk, a milk delivery truck? That's right. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yes, no. I think that the, like, the Grumman, uh, which is the, the company that makes the classic postal truck for America, the big, ugly, square-looking one, 
That one probably is faster. I bet I could look it up. Might be actually be faster than this. But yes, thirty one point three four seconds. Um, Mark, tell us a bit about the QQ ice cream. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right. Got a great shot there, haven't you? It's a pretty cool photo, right? That is a cool photo. Yeah. Managed to make the that, QQ that's about all I can say about it. <laughs> Sorry. Probably cooler than the um, Yeah. Yeah. It's um, 20 kilowatts, so that's 27 horsepower, and it's eight, um, 85 newton meters of torque. Right, so what's, but what's the more powerful spec? That is, that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, that's embarrassing. As far uh, as I know, there is only one motor so far that they've shoved in it, and mm -hmm. that's it. Well, we, we eagerly await the QQ Ice Cream GTR, which will get Performance a version, yeah. <laughs> 40 kilowatt motor yeah um i will that, say that, now, what that does zero to 120 seconds or something <laughs> <laughs> slow down that's da that's that's dangerous that shouldn't be in the hands of the public um but i was gonna say that uh this does make me think these two cars especially just how excited i am for some chinese shop to shove a hayabusa motorcycle engine into one mm. somehow i mean you'd have to absolutely destroy the interior of it but i don't care i mean i mean go to town uh, you know, it would be a cheap project car, and if you could get like a two hundred horsepower Hayabusa engine into it, oh, that would stuff that would be cool. Please let me drive that. Let let me die happy. <laughs> Better yet, yeah. full go full send. QQ. I'm sorry, rather Muling Mini EV convertible Hayabusa. Well, that's just a death recipe, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's just full death sentence. But also, can you can you just just top down screaming at 13,000 RPM, guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have one last contender in this category, and that is the Letin Mengo. And Ethan, I have to compliment you on your photo picking skills because you've picked a, a picture of the, the Mango, which is moving along the road, but its wheels are not moving and there's got no, no driver in it. Photoshopped. <laughs> Just a terrible picture. No, no, this is the self-driving version. Didn't you know about that? One? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I fully thought this car was, they. yeah, they totally photoshopped to put, I didn't realize that. Thank you for putting that out, to put the blue in the background. Well, because I'm going to be honest with you, the Mengo, both in, in all categories, there was it was nearly impossible to find f good photos of it because it feels like no one cares about it. <laughs> Well, no. you notice in your exterior shots, mm -hmm. it's actually got Yema written on it rather than let it. Let me go back to that so we can explain that a bit. So actually, I've, I'm afraid the shot that those guys have, you can see it here on this. I don't have the rear shot in this slideshow now, but if you guys look closely at the front end of the vehicle, you can see that there's the Y-E-M-A Yema. Now tell us, Mark, give us some context as to why that's on there. Okay. Letton is a brand name of a company called Levido, I think it is, mm -hmm. L-E-V-E-D-O. Um, I think that's what, how it's spelled anyway, something like that. So they're a, a company from Shandong province who were previously making low-speed electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of companies in Shandong province for some yes. reason making low-speed electric vehicles. Viewers will remember that we went to Shandong to drive the Chengshu 01, the Zhujun Chengshu 01, which is that super adorable um, mini electric delivery van. Oh, that was your second job, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah the delivery no, that guy. Was when I was, when I was yeah. uh, moonlighting as a, uh, mm. as a delivery guy. Yeah, it suited Didn't you. Go well. <laughs> um, yeah, so they basically couldn't um, actually produce a car, so they bought Yema. So Yema are a company in, based in Sichuan province, or were a company based in Sichuan province, who started, well, I'm not exactly sure how they got into making cars, but at one point they were making a car based on the old Austin Maestro platform. In fact, they had this car that looked like a Subaru Forester, but was based on an Austin Maestro platform, which was a really bizarre That's amazing. Car. That's awesome. I love China. I love China for that. There's just so many absolutely insane car stories of like someone getting a hold of like just the exterior tub of some British car or something for 50 years. Yeah, Austin Maestro was a 1980s car. Yeah. And this was in when? Um, the two. 
two thousand. Recently, yeah. So in fact, it went first to a company called Etzong in Qingdao, Etzong? who were then Etzong. They were a tobacco company oh, not who suddenly Etzong, decided. E D S E L N. No, E T S O N G. Etzong. So they thought, yeah, we make we we have cigarettes. What what's a logical side business for, for us? Car making, of course, they make fumes as well. So, <laughs> so logical step, isn't it? Um, so let's build a car. So, oh yeah, we can uh, buy this old Austin Maestro via Bulgaria. So, in comes the Austin Maestro uh, and Montego, which they never actually met. They never actually made Montego in China, and then it sort of got absorbed into FAW, and then of course FAW didn't want it, so they sold it to Yema. My lord! Then, and that's and uh, now Letin, well Levido have bought Yema. And there's, there's, I've got one more tidbit about a Yema. So you know Yema actually means like wild horse, right? Is that the characters they use? Oh, right. That's, that's okay, I didn't know that. Yep. The Chinese name for okay. Ford Mustang is... Correct. Uh, so oh, Must no. Ford can't use this name, but this Yema, because these guys have it. Oh. So they've had to call it... I'm not sure what it's called in China, the Mustang, but... It's called the they, Yema. Well, sorry, sorry. I don't know if maybe Ford in their official language that's around the vehicle maybe says Mustang in English every time or something like I that. I think it might be. Certainly mm. in, in, in regular parlance, it is called the Yema. Um, mm. That is super interesting and not at all. That's, that's an yeah. interesting that's, that's tidbit. Yeah. I love when a, when a foreign <laughs> OEM gets copyrighted by a Chinese company. Yeah. Um, be, sure to, be sure to, by the way, guys, check out my Instagram where I posted photos recently from a patent filing that was done by a, a, a tech company in beijing for what is i sh just literally a mm. original mini cooper with an electric power train. like the exterior design it's as far as i can tell awesome it's, yeah. and, and i and i said in my post i i i i genuinely hope that this gets uh, avoids lawsuits long enough to actually be made because can you imagine how just ugh, how awesome it would be to get an, to be able to, for cheap, get an OG-looking Mini Cooper, just Mini, with an electric powertrain. Even, a, even, oh, even like a Mini EV powertrain. Oh, that would be so fun. So good. Yes. So anyways, Elliot, a lot of digressions. Let us get back so we can finish this category of performance regarding the Latin Mango. Right. Okay. You ready to be blown away? Um, so we have two versions, the 25 kilowatt hour version, which has, sorry, kilowatt hour, kilowatt version, which has 34 horsepower. And then the 35 kilowatt version, which has 47 horsepower. Um, it's rear wheel drive. I think they're all rear wheel drive. Um, and it has range from. No, I hope uh, that's the next category. Oh, that's the, that's the next category. Sorry. That's one of our final categories. But I will say that it would appear, if we're going to be objective, the we have to give the win to the Letin Mengo for the fact that it has five kilowatts more than the Mini EV. I would suggest, perhaps, that the. I don't know how much more it weighs. I wish I had that number in front of me, and maybe I can look that up during our next category to throw that at you. Uh, see if I might be able to balance out the power, the 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 uh, power to weight ratio. However, that's not the point of this category. We're going raw numbers, so the win goes to the men go. I guess. All right, all right. That's what happens when you bring a real <laughs> car to a mini car fight. Uh, yep. Okay, so our next category is. As Elliot indicated before, range. So I will start by talking a bit about the Mini EV. So the Mini EV comes with now a wide variety of battery packs. When I tested it, it had, I believe, only the 9.3, I don't even know if the 13.9 kilowatt hour battery pack had come out yet, but the 9.3 delivers 120 kilometers, any DC range. The 13.9 delivers 170. There's also a 17.5 and a 26.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, the 26.5, the range topping one, delivers 280 kilometers or 174 miles, but that's on the CLTC range, which as we know is even more generous than NEDC. Who knows what that would be on EPA or what is it? W Is it WLTP or WTLP? WLTP. WLTP. Yeah. Probably significantly less than that uh, for all these cases. I will also mention that uh, unfortunately the Mini V does not have fast charging, um, and so it takes anywhere from 5.5 to 9 hours to charge. The fastest charging battery, interestingly, not the smallest one, the 9.3. It's actually the 17.4 um, 
kilowatt hour one with the lithium iron phosphate pack, which only takes 5.5 hours. Um, but that's what I got, 280 kilometer CLTC. Um, Mark, tell us about the QQ ice cream. There are two varieties of ice cream. Chocolate. Um, yeah, I'm Mark. both, oh my both, God, both pretty vanilla. <laughs> Both pretty vanilla. Okay, so it, um, so you've got nine point six kilowatt hours and thirteen point nine mm. uh, kilowatt hour battery packs, and they're good for either one hundred and twenty or one hundred and seventy kilometers. Quite whether that's NEDC or CLTC, I'm not exactly sure. I'm guessing it's probably CLTC, but yeah, it's hardly world breaking in a way. Mm, that's true. I'm actually going to be able to check because I've got the that is and NEDC. six. That's NED six to eight NEDC. hours charge. Six to eight hours charging. Okay. Okay. So uh, mini EV is going to take that category so far. All right, Elliot. What do you got? Sorry, guys. You've got no chance. I mean, just look at. I've got two charging ports. A fast one and a slow one. Hey, 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 hey! Only on the top of the range with a mango. Do you have that fast? Time? Well, yeah, maybe. But anyway, <laughs> I've got I've got uh, a couple of flavors. So I've got a uh, eleven point five kilowatt hour battery, which gives one hundred and thirty kilometers of range, and a whopping thirty kilowatt hour battery, giving wow. three hundred kilometers of range. Like I said before, it's a real car, not a toy like your your two toy cars. Overkill. It's called Overkill XS. Uh, it's unnecessary. <laughs> Overkill. These, these, listen, guys, I've been saying for years, this horsepower war that we're having with these mini electric cars, first it's first it's 15, then it's 20, now it's 35. When When is it going to stop? Are we going to have a 15 kilowatt uh, electric car? That's just too much. That's in my opinion. You know, I think when, something needs to be done. There needs to be legislation. Um, but unfortunately, um, I think the win actually goes to Elliot again. <laughs> Yep. All right. So Thank you. as we come into our final category of value and we have our conclusions in the vehicle, I want to quickly round up um, the points. <laughs> it seems pretty clear. What's is it there. necessary? Yeah, I don't know if there's a point. <laughs> exterior styling, that was a wash. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Exterior styling I went to the Mango, didn't it? Yep. Because Mark, Mark truly has betrayed me. Uh, he's in my little black book now. Um, and <laughs> interior styling also went to the Mango. Performance. Mango. Range. You guys go to the mango. The value. We shall see. Value wise. Value, I personally think that the Mini EV does have a solid chance of winning this category. I'm putting this, basically, let's talk a bit about price here for context. So the Mini EV price anywhere from basically about 4,500. Oh, sorry, I have it here. Um, 33,000 to 70,000 uh, RMB. That's Chinese currency, but that equivalent, it's equivoc equivocates. That is the equivalent of uh, USD 4,900 to 10,400 dollars. So and those are the prices after the price increases, aren't though, they? I believe so. Those are the latest prices that I've been able to find online. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the I, I personally think that when it comes to the Mini EV, the higher up in the range you go, the less the value is there. So I think a 10,400 RMB mini EV with 30 kilowatts of power and 280 kilometers of range, it's, it's not by any means a, they're robbing you or anything, but I do think that the more of the value is in maybe like a 17 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack, which would be priced, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around $7,000 or so. And I think that's plenty, over like 200 kilometers of range, CLTC, um, I, I do think that would that would be enough. But again, um, you get you get a lot for your money. Mark, tell us about the your value proposition for the QQ ice cream. Right. <clears throat> Look, um, latest prices for it are thirty nine thousand nine hundred to forty nine thousand nine hundred uh, RMB. Um, and that's an increase on the launch prices. So at launch, there were twenty nine thousand nine hundred to forty three thousand nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? What is that? That let me if we check and compare that to the Mini EV. That's slightly. Well, so your I'm sorry. What was your base? Your cheapest version is how much? The cheapest one now is thirty nine thousand nine hundred. So slightly more expensive. Almost a thousand dollars. About than a base Mini EV. Well, yeah, around about five thousand RMB more expensive. Yeah. Right. 
Um, so you're, you're getting up for a thousand dollars. Yeah. So you're looking at like six thousand dollars or so, a little over six thousand dollars for the entry level version of the QQ ice cream versus the forty nine hundred for the mini EV. Uh, and then yours tops out at what is it topping out at now? Forty nine thousand nine hundred. Forty nine thousand, which actually is <clears throat> less than the top of the line mini EV, but also top of the line mini EV. Yeah, but remember, it's a smaller battery. Right. Exactly. More power, more battery, more range. Mm. Elliot. You brought an actual car. What can it do? <laughs> I'm afraid, guys. Um, my price starts with a two. It's yeah, a but that's the original prices. Has the, has oh, the well, price has the price? I mean, is this the latest? Yeah, they'll be coming with any. They'll be coming with old prices. Yeah, twenty nine thousand eight hundred was the original old price for the lowest one. So I, I'm not sure how much it is now. I couldn't find anything. Uh, and the top, we've all gone up probably close to ten percent. So let's assume even yeah. if it went up ten percent, still pretty cheap. <laughs> still very cheap for uh, what is the best car? What is I, an actual car? Yeah, I did hear. Um, just digressing very quickly, I did hear that someone uh, said the Wuling Mini EV like makes I don't know like a hundred RMB profit on each car they sell. I, I have like, some, thank yeah, you, Elliot, fifteen dollars or something. Thanks for reminding me. I have some really interesting data about that because it's something that was brought up. So some people have questioned, like, um, very famously back in the day, Mark and you and I have talked about this. The Cherry QQ, the progenitor of the QQ name, in the in the early mid two thousands, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, they yeah, I think it came out in about it was either two thousand and three or two thousand and five when it first came out. I can't remember which one it was early to mid 2000s um, yeah. so the um the that car made famously made what about 50 rmb or about yeah i think it's 49 49 rmb like something like that allegedly, allegedly allegedly who knows i don't know what the conversion rate was at the time but that today that would be worth about seven. not much different yeah and so to uh, according to the data that i have from online wuling makes 89 rmb yeah per car. that's it that was before the price increases though that, that 89 price. rmb yeah, so uh, a slight caveat there um but here's the thing about these cars because of the way the chinese system works so basically uh in order to ensure the efficiency of motor vehicles and reduce carbon emissions china has a credit system where manufacturers can trade back and forth they have to meet a specific annual credit target um, and they lose a number of certain number of credits, um, you know, if you produce a lot of gas guzzling cars and stuff. So at the end of the year, you end up with some cars or some companies that can't meet the target. This will sound very familiar to anybody who's ever heard of Tesla, because that's how Tesla has for years made a good amount of money is by selling these um, emissions credits uh, to other manufacturers. And so while this car may only make 89 RMB, Per vehicle, and this is true for the QQ ice cream. I'm probably, I'm so this is true for the Mini EV. It's probably very likely similar for the, the QQ ice cream. If anything, I bet you they make less money. If I, if I had to guess, um, but a cherry are famous for not making money. <laughs> that's true. <they're> <laughs> um, but one of these credits, 89 RMB profit. However, one of these credits is currently worth about three thousand RMB or four hundred and sixty-four dollars. So the Mini EV is worth, by the way, two credits. So even though they aren't able to actually make very much money on each car, at the end of the year, they're then able to either offset the cost of credits for their own company or sell those credits to other companies for what would be a very good profit. Again, that's $464 is like, at this point, 10% almost of the total like sales price, a little less than 10% of the sales price of a mini EV, of a, of a base mini EV. So that's- uh, And remember they're selling around about 300,000 plus of them a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. So they're more than gonna make enough money off of these things. That's that's just some context as to why these this category has become so popular. Um, but Elliot, I mean, as the Chinese would say, gong xi, gong xi, congratulations for- <laughs> Thanks. For, uh, winning this hands down again you're bringing a, a gun to a knife fight um bringing this actual vehicle to this well an ex extra pair of doors anyway and then, <laughs> now Elliot, before we started talking uh you said that there they had released a and i encourage everybody to go check this out maybe i'll post a picture of it in the um description for this video we don't have the photos right now they have they're releasing a two-door version of the mengo yes that's right i saw a picture of it in the factory i think today on I was on Twitter or something. Um, so I don't know if that'd be more expensive. Usually they turn out to be more expensive, but really? it's good. It looks quite, yeah. 
It's supposed to be more expensive? How? They're losing doors. What are they, Porsche? Is it a YSAC package? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how these things work. Maybe it's more body stiffening. I don't know. They got a cheap lot of doors before. Who knows? But yeah, it, it looks quite smart. And I think it, it actually means it's more of competition for both of your cars. So well, watch Well, has got a new one coming out as well, which is smaller than the Mini EV, I yeah, think. Yeah, already out. Or the very Nano, similar. The yeah. No, no, no. There's another one. The Willing Nano is actually just a rebadged version mm. of the E200. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. There's a new one called the Wuling Air. Oh. Mm. Um, but, and that's got fast charging, oh. but it's at a higher price point mm. and it looks safer. We'll have to get, <laughs> by the way, I'm sorry. Did we get to the pricing on the, the Mengo? I just want to be just before we wrap up here. The bottom know. price. Not that I don't, I don't have the top price. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, 29,800 RMB. Uh, I'll just keep scrolling over. Oh, it gets more and more. Ex oh, wow. Okay. So the top price for the Mengo is 74,000 RMB, uh, which actually is 4,000 RMB more expensive than the top of line mini. Yeah, still not still not nice to me. Uh, and what's the, what's the current starting price? Uh, let me see if they, they have the current starting price really quickly. This is good. This is good content. People love watching people. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's 30,000 it's 30, RMB. It's too oh, wow. Okay. Sorry, it's, it's so it's actually the... 29,800. Ow. Still. Dang it. Okay. They haven't put up the base one, though. All right. Well, wow. I, uh, I want to I wanna drive. I want to drive the, the mango, and I'd like to drive the ice cream. Uh, I have low expectations for both, but I hope I can get an absolute dirt spec, <laughs> dirt poor spec version of the mango. The problem is when you get into the mango, the hired spec, you're in, into pretty much the elite T03 category, aren't you? I'd much rather mm. T03. <laughs> Me yeah, too. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the, we could go on forever. Uh, usually, my predicted time for these videos is 15 minutes. This one is at about 46 minutes and counting. So we will release you guys, um, both my guests and the fans, to continue your lives. Thank you very much for watching Wheels Boy Lockdown Chat. Uh, I will tell you that things are loosening up a bit here in Shanghai. There is hope. There are scheduled releases. We are allegedly going to be able to get back to work as early as the 1st of June. So I'm hopeful we'll be able to have both myself and hopefully Elliot and Mark will be able to get some content out to you guys in... The year has not been mentioned. The in yes. <laughs> uh, there's always that caveat, the asterisk 2023. Uh, in around maybe mid-June if we're being conservative. So look forward to that. And of course, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to comment below with ideas for videos. Be, what do you guys think? Do you think that the Letton Mengo's uh, win is earned? Do you think it should have been the Mini EV? Uh, no mention of the, Q the QQ ice cream. No, I, no, 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 Mark. No point in saying that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, mini EV fans unite in the comments below and justify my choice. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to my guests. Be sure to check them out on their social media, which is below their uh, little icons there for Twitter and of course for their uh, for YouTube for Elliot. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.